This week, we're going to explore what would happen if three other iconic directors took the reins on Casino. And then you, Jambo, get to decide which version you'd want to see. Number one, The House Always Wins, the fourth film by Jew, the Italian, and The Job. Maybe adding a bit of British flair, but obviously he does have to keep characters American. Red Roulette, a film by, I don't think you'll get this. Welcome back to Mate Night. Today, we're diving into a what-if scenario for Casino. Casino. What? <laughs> <laughs> what is casino, scenario? Casino, Casino. <laughs> Where we imagine how Casino might have turned out if Martin Scorsese hadn't directed it. <laughs> <laughs> So there's just nothing happening. Big change. This <laughs> just, uh, nobody directs it. Just, it's just a script and a bunch of actors. Changes. <laughs> what if Casino they, didn't happen? They all performed it. <laughs> so on our what if segments, we like to take a small change, a small insignificant change. Detail. Like what if there was no director for this film <laughs> and see what would have happened. So this week, we're going to explore what would happen if three other iconic directors took the reins on Casino. But this isn't just speculation, Jambo. I'm going to present you with three distinct visions. I say distinct, we're not going to, it's not that long, but they are visions, <laughs> complete with alternate titles. And then you, Jambo, get to decide which version you'd want to see. But before we get started, if you enjoy this segment or any of the segments that we do, please hit that like button and even subscribe. So, why this change? We spoke about this in the long form, but for to bring um, any listeners up to speed, let's talk about why I'd consider swapping out Scorsese. Sacrilege, I know, because it's a Scorsese mm -hmm, film, mm -hmm. but I'm not too big a fan of old Martin, <laughs> old Marty boy. So while Casino has its merits, it is certainly not without its flaws. For me, the film's nearly three hour length felt very excessive, and particularly because there was such a reliance on the narration to deliver exposition, which it felt like was just talking you through the whole film. No. Very tell not show. Personally, I'd rather if the director had decided to leave things up to interpretation or been a bit smarter around how they led the audience yeah. down the actual story they were Maybe taking. a little more nuance. Just something <laughs> other than being talked at for so Just long. Read me a story. So Scorsese often resorts to telling us through voiceover what's going to happen rather than showing. Uh, and I feel that this is a bit of a storytelling shortcut. Also, as a smaller gripe, the non-linear narrative. Now, we've had so many non-linear films that we've done, so I'm not going to dock it for that. But specifically in this case... The non-linearism was just for the car explosion at the beginning. Yeah. Which I felt came across as a bit of a cheap bait and switch. I was going to say corny. Considering he yeah. didn't actually die from that. Um, so rather than that, or an engaging plot device, maybe scrap that. Um, also, there were so many different mob characters which weren't fleshed out at all. They were just a mm. rotating rogues gallery of mob characters with no depth whatsoever. You feel like if you're going to introduce all of these, maybe you could do it in a way where it's a bit more fun or interesting or at least yeah. memorable because I didn't remember the names of any of the mob characters after this. Any? No, I don't think I did either. Ace. There you go. Oh, I mean, I remember the <laughs> main characters. <laughs> yeah, it's getting. So I felt the film doesn't do enough to develop them, leaving me less invested in their fates. Like, for instance, the guy who ends up killing Nicky. Yeah. He was his best mate and he was lying to the other mob well, not best mates, yeah. but he was really in, in tandem with him. Yeah. And then he was suddenly very anti him. I know Nicky had kind of fucked him over a bit, but didn't you think by the end it was almost way out of left field yeah. that he was yeah. so against Nicky? Things like that. Maybe yeah. we can make this a bit more earned and, and justified. It was, it was a real story and that guy really did it, but Scorsese should have explained what the hell was going on there. Like it felt so, especially after three hours. Mm, How yeah. have they not managed to explain why Nicky's been betrayed by his closest advisor? Yeah, e exactly that. So with such venom as well. That was like it. one of the the key points I wanted to make. You hit on the head is that we've we've literally sat through three hours. Of this. <laughs> How can we not know the names of some of the characters or a bit more of the backstory yeah. on them? Like you had the time. If you're going to take that much yeah. of our time, yeah. Don't just talk to us. All right. And if you tell, don't show. You can just like you know just. 
Just tell us why you did just it. At least. Tell, tell us who they are. <laughs> if you're willing to just <laughs> tell us everything. <laughs> tell us why the fuck this stuff's happening. <laughs> just tell us, Marty. <laughs> so, um, obviously there were things he did well. I enjoyed the humour of it. Uh, the memorable score slash soundtrack in this mm. case. Um, dynamic visual storytelling in, in some cases. Absolutely. I mean, he is a great director, obviously. Um, and, of course, it was character driven. So, these are some points that I wanted to retain in my selection of the uh, different... Um, directors that we're going to look at but that is effectively the change that we're going to look at today outstanding what are your thoughts jambo i'm quite excited to hear who you're coming out with i've got some i've got some things cooking in the back of my mind but i, I went I want... with you know big names mm-hmm. i'm gonna give you the the director give you a title as well um some of their films and... where's ball Yep, they're, they're all they're all hairy <laughs> funny <laughs> casino of the apes casino <laughs> Um, Caesar's Palace. Oh, oh quality. well, Wes, a missed opportunity. What are you doing, Wes? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> so, number one, I reckon this may be the most obvious choice given the things I liked and the things I didn't like. So, we have The House Always Wins, the fourth film by Quentin Tarantino. Oh. Quentin Tarantino, known for films such as Pulp Fiction, Inglorious Bastards, and Kill Bill. In The House Always Wins, Tarantino's signature style would take center stage. Imagine John Travolta as Ace, Harvey Keitel as Nicky, and Uma Thurman as Ginger. In this case, by the way, I wanted to actually replace Scorsese as it happened, just for the Tarantino one. Because yeah. I, I thought, okay, who's who's some good cast? And Tarantino was around that time. He could have, let's say, Scorsese didn't get the rights to the script for some reason. Tarantino yeah. got it, and he decided to reimagine it at that time. What might have looked like? Right. Okay. He'd still be able to have John Travolta in there. Yeah. I think John Travolta might. Have, I, I love Robert De Niro, but I think he might have done a better job. We're both quite big Travolta fans. Mm. Harvey Keitel. Are you? Do you know who that is? It's the one who plays Winston Wolfe in Pulp Fiction. Yeah, okay. So still quite diminutive, still quite aggressive, maybe a bit less... But a bit cooler. <laughs> maybe a bit cooler than, than <laughs> Joe Pesci, and not quite five foot three. Um, Uma Thurman is Ginger. He was kind of always putting Uma Thurman in things, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, So uh, Tarantino would bring his love for non-linear storytelling. And now I'm thinking, if you are going to do non-linear, in for a penny, in for a pound, don't just do a silly bait and switch at the start and end. Let's actually go all over the place. So... Non-linear storytelling with his own twist. Mm. Instead of merely following the events as they happened, he might rewrite history entirely like he loves to do. So you could see this happening in a load of different ways. Maybe some of the characters survive that wouldn't have. Maybe um, Nicky... Probably (laughs) not. (laughs) Maybe Nicky kills the people who kill his brother in that scene. He turns the table. Yeah, okay. Maybe it becomes a part two as a, oh. a, a revenge plot with Nicky, perhaps. Uh, Tarantino would kill Nicky. Always the ones that you someone. want to die do end up dying. In but a, you're in looking at maybe different deaths. I mean, I liked the ending of Casino, so maybe maybe you don't change that. But maybe. certainly it's going to be good for the exposition because yeah. we actually have interesting, funny dialogue will be how we learn about yes. what's going on. And you can have different setups and different scenes. We'd probably get a bit more of a richer dynamic between... Nikki and Sam, like their conversations, they could be mm-hmm. talking a bit more about their backstory, how they know each other, why are they friends, um, anything like that. You'd, you'd be able to set those scenes in the Tarantino esque yeah. vibe. Um, so picture Ace and Nikki in a tense, loaded conversation in a back room of a smoky casino, revealing their schemes and tensions with each biting line. You you could see it. You could see how Tarantino would execute something like that. Oh yeah, and also. He would be great for the soundtrack. I was just about to say. Yeah. Soundtrack would yeah, be perfect. 100%. 70s, that's really, he's a child of that era yeah. as well. So yeah. you feel like the authenticity that you liked, mm-hmm. he'd be able to bring that as well. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, anything rock, obscure tracks that make every scene more vibrant and memorable. Uh, Tarantino's Casino wouldn't just be a mob story, but it would be a stylized, high energy experience that's as much about the character's witty exchanges as it is about the action. And... Given the behemoth that Casino was, Mm -hmm. I feel like Tarantino could take a three-hour film, chop up the narrative or chop up the chronology a bit, Mm -hmm. make it feel a bit fresher, 
Mm. Like I ended up watching this in three sittings and I thought, wow, if I had to watch this in one, <laughs> I would have struggled. Did you watch it all in one? Yeah, of course. I did. Yeah. How did you find that? Well, I think any film is going to be more enjoyable if you watch it. <laughs> no, I'm glad. But, I didn't. but no, it was, it, it went on forever. So yeah, yeah, I agree. So I agree. he's our first setup. Yeah. Quantum. I like the new name. Remind me that the house always wins. The house always wins. A quote that, I'm sure they said in the the film. No, right? I feel like they maybe it's a phrase, isn't it's, it? So. Yeah, it's a good title. Though. I like that. It's very Tarantino. The Jew, the Italian, and the Job. Hang on. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Ooh, is that is that the is that who you? That's not. It's not. Um, it doesn't matter. It's not him. A guy Ritchie flick. Oh, notable film. Snatch, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. The Gentleman, The Jew, The Italian, and The Job would be Guy Ritchie's take on the Las Vegas underworld. Maybe adding a bit of British flair, but obviously he does have to keep characters American. Yeah. So it might be a bit more of an ambitious attempt for him. And in my imagining, I actually have him coming off the back of. I, I, I say this, but the, the casting that I chose was maybe a bit all over the place. But I have him coming off the back of Snatch. No, so he's in that okay. zone, but now he's going to attempt an American, yeah. an American so mob still film. Very so he's like... still fresh. He's still like a, a, an interesting new director who's yeah. really taking everything on. But he does have, I mean, I had Matthew McConaughey as A, so maybe a bit early for that, but whatever. Time doesn't matter. Jason Statham as Nicky, but he's doing an accent. <laughs> I feel like he had to have Jason Statham in. You, yeah. I'd like to see him try it. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I can see him playing Nicky, though. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 I'm no, going to no. put you in the grave. No, 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 no. <laughs> Nicky's like, you're not careful. I'm going to put you in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and Michelle Dockery, who worked with Richie and the Gentleman as Ginger. Richie's version would be heavy on the action, as you can expect, mm. with each major character getting their own backstory, which he is great at fleshing out with interesting stories. Um, the narration would be witty, fast-paced, similar sort of style to Tarantino, but yeah. a bit more... It's usually just a British Tarantino, isn't he? But one thing that I will say that Richie sets himself apart with is a d diverse set of characters within a space. So like, mm -hmm. you know, East End London, he could have a massive eclectic cast of characters yeah. and he does a great job of giving them their own limelight, usually through storytelling. So mm. he'll have one character talk to another about another character in the guise of some interesting story. And that story would tell you all you need to know about that character. Uh, and you remember yeah. the names of those characters. You remember where they came from, Definitely. what they do. So uh, each mob character hence would be more fleshed out, making the film feel less bloated and more engaging. Dialogue would be snappy and full of banter. The humour we may identify a bit more with as Brits. Um, and the soundtrack would be similar yeah. in terms of, you know, some real rock classics and good vibe um, bangers, but maybe a bit of a mix of British tracks as well. So Rich Casino, stylish, action-packed, uh, the stakes are high and the characters are as colourful as the dialogue. I feel like just post-Snatch as well, it might end up being a little grittier than Scorsese's Casino. I think that he may deliver better on the humour, which I know some elements Scorsese obviously tried, but Guy Ritchie's films are like funny, genuinely yeah. funny. So it would be a different, it'd be a bit more of a light-hearted, but maybe more bloody but more light-hearted. Yeah, that's it. it. It can be both, can't it? And I think that the mm. Richie post snatch is a, like much grittier than Casino was. Mm. I think. So, final film then, Red Roulette, a film by I don't think you'll get this. David Fincher. David Fit. God damn it! Oh. Oh, right okay go notable on. films fight club seven gone girl so a bit of a darker take on this one we want to see how someone who's a bit more dramatic and tense would have looked at it so in fincher's red roulette the atmosphere would be dark intense and psychologically charred mm -hmm. so the psychological interplay that he has between the characters fincher would really heighten that with tense um gripping scenes that would really showcase the the psychological disposition of each character okay. rather than yeah maybe make them a bit caricaturish and cartoonish which yeah. sometimes can happen in um scorsese's version 
I've gone for Ben Affleck as Ace and Edward Norton as Nicky. I feel like Edward Norton <laughs> has that intense craziness. He, although he isn't short, Nicky is supposed to be quite short, but Norton is played against is against Ben Affleck, who's massive. So mm. maybe you could just make it look like he's shorter than he is. Yeah, okay. Something like that. Or maybe get Tom Cruise, actually. Tom Cruise, Ooh. wow. Uh, and I've gone with Roseman Pike as Ginger. So Fincher would strip the story down to its core, focusing intensely on the psychological dynamics between the characters. There may be a tense scene that no doubt you can imagine where Ace is plagued by paranoia and obsession and meticulously monitors every movement in the casino. The camera lingering on his strained expression as the tension builds. Mm. This film wouldn't be about fast paced action, but rather a slow burn, an exploration of trust, betrayal and the human psyche under pressure. And you'd still get the cathartic moments of of death, of uh, mob violence. Yeah, absolutely. All of that you could interplay with real yeah. tenseness in the scenes between the characters. And with three hours, you've got time to do that. Uh, other identifiers of Fincher works would be a dark color palette, muted tones. So maybe that wouldn't work as well with the 70s Vegas approach i think it could it's something yeah. i'd like to see how he would go about that but that's the only thing that i could clearly see as a, a demerit against him um but he still uses shadows and lighting to create a visually striking film that's typically oh, yeah. what he's able to do so it can feel both of its time and timeless the soundtrack again would be a, a break away from the others that we've looked at it'd be more eerie more industrial and contributing to the overall sense of dread mm. that perm permeates the film in Fincher's hands, Casino would be a psychological thriller more than a crime drama. Very different film. So, Jambo, which of these versions would you have wanted to see? David Pat Fincher. Oh, really? sorry. Go on. <laughs> That's <laughs> not interesting. David Fincher. Yeah. I, I, I actually think that the story needed a darker direction, like in terms of the way it was presented. The story itself is a quite a dark story. Mm. And I actually think that when you were laying it out to me, especially once you start explaining about how he would present it visually and also about the, you know, which I, I said one of my favorite things about the story was the relationship between Nikki and Ace. Mm. And you were talking about how you could really get into their heads with a Fincher one that would enhance that thing that I liked so much yeah. massively. Yeah. Then I'd probably say Tarantino and then I'd say Richie. Yeah. Richie was, Richie's a bit of a rogue, rogue thought. I I I, th I actually added Richie specifically for the storytelling about the the cast of characters. I like that. He, he yeah. would bring bring them out well. To be honest with you, all three of them sound better. <laughs> <laughs> but what did you think? Do you like the sound of Tarantino, of Guy Ritchie, of David Fincher? Do you prefer Martin Scorsese? Are you uncultured? Anyone we haven't thought of yet? Yeah, more likely have you thought of someone better than, than the ones that I came up with. If you have and want to share with us, please feel free to comment below. If you did like this, please feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you very much for listening. It's been Mate Night. Thanks so much, guys.